Um, Jackie, I want to start with you. I want to read some more from these emails because this puts John Eastman, who's in the Oval Office on the 5th, who's pressuring Pence to carry out the coup plot at his level, this puts his fingerprints all over the interactions with the state legislators running the fake electors plot. This is his email. This is an exchange with Pennsylvania State Rep Russ Diamond. This is from Russ to Eastman on December 4th. The Trump legal team was not exactly stellar at PA's hearing. They failed to provide the affidavits of their witnesses and made a glaring error by purporting that more ballots had been returned than mailed out. It is for this reason that I so latched onto your comments that actual fraud is irrelevant when the election itself is unlawful. To that, Eastman writes... Pennsylvania State Rep. Russ Diamond giving feedback to a resolution he was pushing um, that he had actually drafted to nullify Pennsylvania's election result. It says this. This is Eastman writing. Having done the math, you'd be left with a significant Trump lead that would bolster the argument for the legislature adopting a slate of Trump electors perfectly within your authority to do anyway, but now bolstered by the untainted popular vote. That would help provide some cover I would also include after paragraph three a specific legislative determination that the slate of electors certified by the governor under the illegally conducted election are also null and void. This puts Donald Trump's personal coup plotter inside the Oval Office on the 5th, directing the drafting of Pennsylvania state legislation. What is the significance in the eyes of the committee, Jackie? Yeah, it turns out, Nicole, that there were multiple blueprints for a coup, potentially, at least uh, as, as John Eastman was trying to, uh, in this case, again, another spaghetti on the Constitution, uh, attempt to somehow execute the president's wishes and overturn the results of the election. And, and this also comes, um, as, as Kyle Cheney noted in his reporting, as John Eastman was starting to file other legal filings for Trump at the Supreme Court. And before he started uh, advocating for the plan for Mike Pence to unilaterally halt the objection to the Electoral College certification. Um, but I think all of it really begs the question of what else is John Eastman hiding? And that's what the committee wants to know. That's why they're still working to get some of these emails, um, which were uh, released because of um, the Public Information Act. Uh, because John Eastman sent some of them from a public university. The rest of his emails, though, which the committee is still trying to get, um, has not been released since those were sent from his email at a private university. Uh, so it also shows how much the committee has yet to wrap up and, and has not yet obtained ahead of these June 9th hearings. Um, although in uh, an update that they sent out to reporters today, they said that they've obtained well over 150,000 documents and records so far, interviews with uh, nearly 800 people and depositions as well, and, and those are continuing. So, Neil, Eastman's in the Oval Office on the 5th with Trump and Pence, we already know. Eastman is, according to these emails, corresponding directly with state legislators, directing them on what to codify into state law, drafting, move, I would, adding language to paragraph three of a specific legislative determination that the slate of electors. I mean, what is Eastman's criminal exposure. Um, it's there, as well as Trump and others who are, you know, looks like involved with Eastman. So, you know, I clerked with John Eastman on the Supreme Court. He clerked for Clarence Thomas when I clerked for Justice Stephen Breyer. And I always thought he was a little kooky, but never cooey. <laughs> but that's what he was doing here. I mean, under the, under the cover of math, He's trying to throw out votes, and his theory is, well, 4% of absentee ballots are generally thrown out. Here, there was only a smaller fraction thrown out of 0.4%, so let's just throw out an additional 3.6% of the ballots. Um, what? I mean, first, I'm not even sure how many of those 4% of ballots ca were cast by Mark Meadows. Um, second, <laughs> I don't think there's any electoral scheme anywhere which works the way Eastman is proposing. It's ludicrous on its face. And I think Eastman knew it, because that's what I think the emails are so telling, because Eastman uses the phrase, quote, will provide some cover, as you flashed earlier on the screen, Nicole. That's just an admission that Eastman knew what he was doing was wrongful. And this is really a kind of three bites at the apple strategy that Eastman was trying to do. First was have an election. And if you lose the election, then you go to court, 
And if you lose in court 63 times over, then you get state legislatures to just appoint their own alternate slate of electors. I mean, th this is maybe it's the way Russia works. It's not the way America works. Um, but it's the way that John Eastman and Donald Trump tried to work. And I, I just want to read to you something that um, uh, is, is in the Washington Post reporting that says Eastman, this is a quote from Congressman Jamie Raskin, quote, Eastman wasn't doing anything that Trump wasn't doing himself. Congressman Raskin, a member of the January 6th committee, told me, quote, they were both trying to get officials in the electoral process to substitute a counterfeit for the actual vote totals. Eastman was seeking to implement a new mathematical calculation contrived to produce a Trump win in Pennsylvania. This shows the country one more strategic booby trap that was improvised by Trump's team that can sit there for use by bad faith actors in future elections. I, I, I guess, Neil, my, my question is, it, it sounds like the committee at least in its public utterances, has already tied Trump to all of Eastman's um, conduct. Is that what you hear? Uh, that is, that's the way I read it. And I would say it's not just the committee, but also Judge David Carter in California reviewing the committee's submission. He first called Eastman's effort a, quote, coup in search of a legal theory. And then it tied all of that to Donald Trump. And I mean, these emails show that John Eastman actually did have plenty of theories. He just couldn't find one that any reasonable court or any reasonable legislator would go along with. 